Good afternoon, YTPC. Southwest Piper coming to you on this wonderful, wonderful Sunday afternoon. I am smoking a little bit of a Sutliff's Christmas Spice in a recently purchased uh, Peterson Dublin. Um, I believe this is the 005 uh, Fishtail. And having myself a little bit of uh, a little bit of bourbon. Well, um, oh, I hope everyone is having a restful day. It's been a very busy week and weekend uh, for my house. Wrapping up, or wrapped up my first full week back to work after uh, being on leave. Saturday was mostly dedicated towards getting caught up on chores and uh, going to the market, things of that nature. Um, woke up this morning to a wonderful, wonderful uh, surprise. We received our first snowfall for the uh, for the season, and did um, here in the southwest, especially well in the Albuquerque area, we tend to not see uh, heavy snow amounts. We will see between one to three inches at at best uh, a couple times during the the winter months and. Um, yeah, I woke up to about two inches, so great, great afternoon or morning. Um, woke up this morning. I was so excited. I, I tend to wake up right about 3.30 in the morning, and uh, I stir for a little bit, and then I try to fall back to sleep, but right at about 4 o'clock, I know that they were forecasting some snow, so I, so I uh, leaned over out of the bed and I peeked through the blinds, and sure enough, fresh little blanket of snow on our uh, in our backyard. So I was excited. I tried to wake up the two-year-old, get him to get excited about it, but he was not. Uh, he was not ready to wake up at four in the morning. So I went downstairs, made myself a. Uh, cup of coffee um, I've been watching this uh, this series on the History Channel called Hunting Hitler and so I wanted to watch an episode of that and um, and I just lounged about on the chair with the fireplace on thinking about how I was gonna what what pipe and what blend I was gonna start my day with and uh, two-year-old family woke up the two-year-old of course saw the snow wanted to run outside and so uh, we went outside and we made some snowballs and had a little snowball fight I helped him build his first little snowman and so he was excited about that. And we came inside. We had a nice hearty breakfast of um, oatmeal and heavy cream and walnuts and pecans and uh, 
some brown sugar in there. So it was nice. Good morning. Real nice morning. Um, the morning was coming off the heels of our, uh, of our second Christmas activity for the season, which was, um, which was a, uh, uh, twinkle light parade. So, you know, they deck out some vehicles with Christmas lights and have a parade usually down a main road, main street down there in the city. So we caught that last night. That was a lot of fun. Second year in a row doing that one. Sorry. Um, I'm out here in the garage and it's a little bit nippy out here. So uh, I'm trying to keep the snot from running down my mustache here. Uh, yeah, so um, Christmas spice. Uh, just a quick few things to say about this. Um, it definitely... Um, has that heavy, heavy vanilla kind of nutmeggy, and I heard, yeah. Well, anyway, has that the that vanilla nutmeg bag note, tin note. Um, it's Sutliff, so it's bulk. Uh, and um, hold on here. There we go. And uh, you know, it 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 was really, really moist. Even though it's I it it was in a baggie for a week and a half, and then I jarred it and it's still really 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 moist. So it's taken about twenty to thirty minutes of drying time for uh, for this one. But gotta say, another blend that I was pleasantly surprised about. Um, like with uh, the black spice and also with. Uh, the autumn evening, I was really worried that after hitting, having such a heavy um, tin note, you know, very sweet, very, I don't know how to describe it. It's it's not just sweet, it's like thick, like a, like a thick syrupy kind of smell. And I was smelling this one and I was like, oh my, is this going to be the one I don't like? Uh, but I like it. I do like it. That, that sweetness, that syrupiness is uh, subdued. What I really like about this one, it, is, it has some complexity to it, at least to my palate. Um, it has a, this tanginess at the top of the, of, the, um, of the draw. And then as you fill your mouth with the smoke, that tanginess gives way to some, uh, some kind of bread-like, um, some like, not very sweet, but like, Bread like uh, that Virginia -y, um, note, and um, and as I progress through the bowl, so this is actually a my second one, second bowl of this, and as I progress through the bowl, it, it takes on that uh, spiciness. Um, I I I detect nutmeg, um, maybe like some cinnamon, and I've been told that. And I don't know if this is what is used in this blend, but uh, when you have, um, I think it's called star of anise or anise, um, it can give the, a lot of those complex spice flavors. So I do like this. I like this a lot. It was a good day to break open this jar for the uh, our first snow. And yeah, good time. A um, couple things I want to show you guys today. Pretty tasty. Pretty tasty. All right, so here's what I want to show you guys. First thing. So I said in a previous video, um, I, I really do try to embrace this uh, DIY can-do attitude. Um, if I can figure it out, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do it myself. And uh, so here's what I came up with. Now, it's a little rough because I was just trying to get a first attempt at this. 
but, and there's actually a plate down in here, but this is gonna be my first attempt at a tobacco press. So, and uh, I, you know, obviously it's got like these huge gaps, but this is because I was using some scrap wood and um, didn't wanna make too many cuts and I was just trying to get an idea of how I would like this to look. So here is the first attempt at it. And um, so yeah, I'm excited to throw some tobacco in here and press out some cakes. So um, really excited about this. Uh, the dimensions kind of work out to be um, just about uh, like two and a half inches by four inches or so. I think that's a pretty good size um, just because I want to be making not large quantity of cakes right now because I don't even know if this is going to work. I don't know if the tobaccos that I use are going to produce cakes that I like. So we'll see. But I think this is a first good attempt at this. Um, so I'm excited about this. Okay, a couple other things I want to get to. Um, it's become a little bit of a Sunday ritual for me. Not a ritual, but I don't know, Sunday activity. Is uh, We've been doing family dinner over at my in-law's house. And so we over there a little early. And we came back today, and we're going to go back in just a bit. But we go over there usually a little bit early, and my father-in-law and I, we jet across town, and we stop into our local brick and mortar and, you know, just pick up a couple things. Um, not trying to restock or, or purchase anything big because, I mean, let's just face it, I can get that stuff cheaper on smoking pipes or pipes and cigars or four noggins or whatever. But I do try to, I, I want to, I want to make sure they are getting some of my business. So, um, so I went in there today, a couple things that I got, uh, specifically for the, uh, the little press that I, that I have, um, was looking for something I can throw in there. But first thing I got, uh, got myself a new cob. Um, I like having cobs around they're disposable i mean they're they, they i i don't know i i think i think my feeling towards cobs until i get, i get one that's like oh i really need to take care of that um they serve my purposes of having something in my mouth to uh what i'm doing yard work or working in the garage or whatever the case may be but i can clench these pretty good and i'm not too too torn if they get beat up a little bit um you can always replace these bits they're really, uh, um, they're really cheap to, to replace. So, yeah. But anyway, if you notice, this one is a little bit different. Now, you might say, I've seen I've seen bent stems on a on a cob before, so not that. What are you talking about? Well, I did not purchase this one with this bend. This is a and I've already smoked a little bit. I'm going to talk about what I smoked out of here. but And I just got this today. Um, this is the straight Diplomat with a Danish bit. Um, you know, pretty standard for Missouri Meerschaum. And it was at my brick and mortar. And I got this. And I uh, was watching, I believe it was an old Aristocob video. And um, Scott shows you how to bend your stems. And uh, it's a process I'm fairly familiar with for bending other kinds of soft plastics. So um, I decided um, that I would like this uh, diplomat to have a fairly um, dramatic bend to it. Now, let me show you how dramatic. Hmm? Now, the fear is, is that because the the shank isn't, you know, drilled at an angle, that by just bending it so much, potentially tobacco just fall out of my mouth or out of the bowl, right? Didn't have that problem. But why would I want a pipe like this? 
Um, I will say that this pipe in particular likely is not going to be going out in the yard with me um, while I work. Or it's not going to be in the, the garage while I am working on things out here. This one will be used while I go. I've been going on evening walks, uh, late evening walks, like around 10, 11 o'clock at night. And I've been taking that other Peterson that I just got. Because it has, let me grab that for you real quick. It has that nice bend. And when I'm walking, I like to keep my hands in my coat and just puff as I'm walking. So I wanted a cob that could serve that purpose. Um, now I know what you're saying. There's other cobs out there that I could have got that have that effect, and you're right. <laughs> but I was at the brick and mortar today, and I saw this. And I have a one or two, maybe just down to one now of these diplomat shapes. I really like them. They're nice and thick, nice tall bowl. And uh, yeah, I just, I think it's going to serve me perfectly for, for uh, what I want to do, uh, you know, with my evening walks. So awesome. A um, couple other things I got today. Okay, um, now I'm excited about this one. This and this is why I already smoked today out of this guy. Um, so my brick and mortar has a house blend right here called. Docs blend and I was telling I was telling uh, the gentleman who was behind the counter that I've been on the hunt for some English aromatic crossovers um, now the reason being I think I mentioned this in the previous video is that uh, I really like frog Morton on the town. I'm not so much of a fan of Frogmorton Cellar, but Frogmorton on the town, I like that one. And that has that sort of English aromatic crossover uh, complexity to me. Maybe it's not a complexity, but um, so I was describing this to the gentleman who works at the brick and mortar where I shop. And so he asked me, have you ever tried our house blend called Doc's Blend? It's got a fair amount of Latakia in it. Um, it's got uh, some Virginias. It's got Perique, a little bit of Perique, and some Orientals. And I was like, well, I have not, but that sounds like, <laughs> that sounds like my, uh, my cup of tea there. And so he said, okay, you got to try it. So I picked up, this is a 40 gram bag. I'll throw this into a jar. Um, but I picked that up and I'm so excited about it that I, yeah, I, I got a bowl ready and I will say, is it going to replace my frog, mat, frog Morton on the town? No, I've got a couple tins of that. Is it something that I can smoke in its stead? I think so. I think so. So I'm excited. Brick and mortars, holding it down.
All right, I'm going to come back to this one. So, this was one that I got. Only for the reason that, for that small little press that I made, I got something that I want to be able to press. Now I think, given what is used to make this blend, because they, I don't want to say, I mean, I, I feel like most, most brick and mortars, except, except for a few of their like really unique blends, they kind of do like a pretty standard mix of different things, you know, like you're always going to detect one Q or BCA, you know, something. It's usually those two components. So I got this one. It's called a uh, boss's blend. Uh, boss's blend. That's going to go in the press. Now I'm actually thinking about mixing this because when I was smelling it, it smells good, but it's not one of those ones where I'm like, I want to make sure I save or savor what I have of that, even though I could probably get it really quickly. But I might just um, mix that with a jar of Frankenstein blend that I have. I call it Frankenstein because it's basically the last little bit of any jar that I finish, and I can't quite make a bowl with it. And it's just been packing up, packing up, packing up. And I might mix it with that and then throw that in the press and see what I get. So. That might be interesting. I think in that jar I currently have a little bit of um, uh, 5100 red cake, some 1Q, <laughs> uh, some um, Revelation match, not Revelation, but Revelation match, and um, something else. I want to say it's like a Balkan um, that somebody gave to me as they were passing through town. They stopped at a tobacco shop in Chicago. Maybe not quite Chicago. Maybe it was Indiana, somewhere. Um, and I don't quite like that that blend on its own. Um, it says that it's a Balkan, my, my limited experience experience with Lakeland tobaccos, it tastes like that. It's very floral essence and it really gets me. So I might throw that in there and just see if that caking it down mellows it out. Um, sorry, getting a little notification there on the old phone there. Um, so here's the last thing I picked up today. And I'm not going to show you this. I've been real careful not to show you where I got these. Uh, boy, I, I, you guys will figure it out. You know that I've said enough where I'm from, where I live, and there, there's really only one or two shops in the area where I could go to. So anyway, I got this. This is also from my brick and mortar. Now, this has been labeled morning pipe. Obviously you're thinking, oh, maybe it's Dunhill? Well, it's not early morning pipe, morning pipe. Oh, wasn't there a blender or a company who was doing a sort of match to early morning pipe and called it morning pipe? Was it McClellan? I think it was. Yeah. Now, my brick and mortar has a little bit of a stash of this morning pipe. And so uh, I purchased a little bit of it. Now, the reason why I purchased a little bit of it, when McClellan had announced that they were closing their doors. I obviously went down to my brick and mortar to find what they had 
of my favorite McClellan tobacco, which is the Frogmorton on the town. And they had a few tins, so I bought those. And I also bought one or two tins of some other stuff. I think it was like the Virginia 35. Um, uh, I forget what the number is, but I got a tin, an unopened tin of the Oriental. Uh, I can't remember the number of it, like the green tin. And, um, but I was really trying to make sure that I left what I could without taking everything on the, I'm just not that person. I'm not going to go in there and clear out a shelf. But somebody else did. And the person that was working around the counter today was, I don't want to say vocal, but very, very much voiced his displeasure that somebody did that. So if this is the McClellan early morning pipe match, their morning pipe, and they've got a little bit of stock of it. I'm not going to run in there and clear out their their stock. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that's what I got for today. Um, been thinking a lot about the uh, subscribers. And uh, I remember I, I'm... My last video, I said, when I get to 200, we'll think about, you know, I'd like to do a giveaway. I feel like that's just too, that's like, maybe it's me overthinking it or maybe not, but I'm, I'm just, you know, who's even say I get to 200? That's the truth. Um, so I'm thinking when I get to 150, I'll, uh. I'll, throw, I'll put together a little bit of a giveaway. Um, all right, guys. So this is what I got for you. Um, I'm going to finish this bowl of Christmas spice. I'm going to catch up on an episode of Hunting Hitler. Um, I got to say, this is a fascinating show. But it also pisses me off. <laughs> um, part of me thinks... If Hitler did get away, how could that ever happen? <sighs> you know what I mean? Uh, anyway, hope you're well. Be well. Um, have a have a pipe uh, while you enjoy this video. Or if you don't enjoy this video, have a pipe and enjoy the pipe in lieu of this video. Uh, take care. I'm going to try to come to you guys a couple times next week. I know I said that this past week, but I think this past week, this week's going to mellow out just a tad. So yeah. Um, all right. Be well, guys. Southwest Piper signing off.